Greetings, podcast listeners. In today's episode, I'll be speaking about Mussolini's appointment as Prime Minister in October 1922. Prior to his appointment as Prime Minister, there are three clear periods in Mussolini's career before his appointment as Prime Minister. The first period is socialism. In 1909, Mussolini moved to Austria-Hungary, where he became the editor of a socialist newspaper. However, he was deported back to Italy for violating laws that restricted press freedom. In 1910, Mussolini became the editor of another socialist newspaper, but was jailed for six months for inciting violence. While he was imprisoned, he began writing his autobiography. He became the editor of yet another newspaper, Avanti, in 1912. In 1914, Mussolini became the leader of the City Council of Milan. The second period of his career is the establishment of fascism. Mussolini began Il Popolo d'Italia on 15th of November 1914. It was a pro-war newspaper during World War I that became the foundation for the fascist movement until it ceased publication on the 24th of July 1943. On the 11th of December 1914, Mussolini formed the Fascists of Revolutionary Action after being expelled by the Socialist Party of Italy. On the 23rd of March 1919, he renamed it to form the Italian Fascists of Combat. Their support increased, sparked by resentment of the Treaty of San Germain. Their policies were especially attractive to war veterans. By the end of 1919, Mussolini entered the general election as the fascist candidate, but lost following a socialist landslide victory. The third period of Mussolini's career is the rise to political power. By 1921, he was elected into Italian parliament as one of the 35 fascists, but briefly resigned as fascist leader and was forced to end the Pacification Act with the socialists. In November 1921, he transformed the fascists into the Partito Nazionale Fascista and was able to hold much more control with an extremist right-wing party. They also dropped their policy of anti-clericalism, thus increasing the support of the Church and Catholics. On the 16th of October 1921, the fascist leaders began to plan a revolt, which is to become known as the March on Rome. At the Fascist Congress in Naples on the 24th of October, Mussolini brazenly declared that the fascists would either be appointed or seize power themselves. All the while, the authorities took no notice. The takeover began on the 27th of October. Overnight, the fascists seized control of key buildings around Italy, such as telephone exchanges, police stations, government offices, etc. While they were mostly successful, in some places they were temporarily successful, and in others they failed. In an attempt to halt the further crisis, Mussolini was offered a ministerial post. However, other fascists persuaded him to reject the offer and wait, as the government had taken limited action against them so far. They believed that they could achieve a more satisfactory outcome from the march on Rome. While the fascists gathered in three main areas around Rome, the Black Shirts, a volunteer-based paramilitary of the fascist party, were under strict orders not to clash with the army. With no end in sight, Prime Minister Luigi Facta asked the King, Emmanuel III, to agree to military action against the fascists. On October 28th, after a long period of reflection, the King agreed to impose martial law and order the arrest of Mussolini. However, he quickly reconsidered and reversed his decision. Former Prime Minister Antonio Salandra attempted to form a new government including Mussolini. However, Mussolini refused to participate. On the 29th, Salandra advised the king to appoint Mussolini as prime minister, and the king agreed. He sent a telegram to Mussolini, inviting him to Rome, and he left by train to Rome, as he did not participate in the march on Rome, quite ironically. Officially, Facta resigned on the 31st of August, with Mussolini officially appointed as prime minister by the king on that day. There are many factors which led to Mussolini becoming Prime Minister in 1922. Some historians believe that the main reason was the appeal of the National Fascist Party, which promoted nationalist and anti-communist beliefs. However, I believe there were more significant aspects which contributed to his rise of power. Most importantly, the weak government which was in place during the post-war period up to 1922. On the one hand, the appeal of fascism can be seen as a significant contribution to Mussolini's appointment as Prime Minister on October 31, 1922. One of the reasons for this is the evolving policies of the fascist party. 
Firstly, in June 1919, the fascists supported a republic with universal male and female suffrage, but in November 1921, they committed their political structure ideology to ensure Italy's historic destiny. Secondly, in June 1919, they proposed the confiscation of religious properties, but by November 1921, they were no longer focusing on this element. Thirdly, in June 1919, they had a peaceful foreign policy, but in November 1921, their focus was complete Italian unification, with a major role in the Mediterranean. Over time, the fascists changed their policies in order to garner more support. Firstly, following the Biennio Rosso, a period of political instability, they were committed to forming a strong and stable government. Secondly, by November 1921, they saw that religion was a large factor in Italian politics and wished to garner the support of the Church and Catholics. Thirdly, by 1921, Italy was enraged by their treatment at the Paris Peace Conference and businesses were seeking to expand. Therefore, as a result of their change of policies, they were able to attain a wider support group from the Italian population. Another reason that gave a hand to the appeal of fascism was the strong leadership. Firstly, Mussolini was able to gain a support group during his time as a journalist at Avanti, as well as in Il Popolo di Italia, the people of Italy, which was founded by Mussolini himself. Secondly, Mussolini was a very charismatic and gifted public speaker. As a result, he was able to attract a lot of followers for the fascist party. Thirdly, Mussolini's physique was said to make him stand out as he was strong and bold. This enabled him to be more recognisable to the public. Furthermore, his editorial role in the newspapers enabled his message to be widely accepted and supported. As a result of these personal strengths, Mussolini was successful in becoming Prime Minister after his appointment by the King in 1922. The fascists formed an ideology that Mussolini was the best person in the state and attracted a wealth of support. Conversely, the weak government was a fundamental root cause contributing to Mussolini's appointment as Prime Minister at the end of October 1922. One of the main weaknesses of Italy's government from 1919 to 1922 was the unstable leadership. In the four-year period of 1919 to 1922, there were five prime ministers, Orlando, Nitti, Giolitti, Bonomi and Facta. These prime ministers came from various political parties and failed to solidify their leadership positions by maintaining control over the government. Thereby, the frequent change of prime ministers resulted in a fragile government incapable of managing the country. Each Prime Minister failed to unite the elected political parties, which was the only way that Italy would be able to effectively solve the post-war problems. As a result of this, the position and power of the government was tarnished. The Italian population began to look to extremist parties, away from the centrist political ideology of transformismo, which rejected the transition to far left or right. Another factor which weakened the liberal Italian government was its failure to tackle post-war problems. In 1919, the Treaty of San Germain was seen as a plunder, and their victory in World War I a mutilated victory, as Prime Minister Orlando was unable to obtain the territories that Italy demanded following the First World War. Meanwhile, the population of Italy itself was divided in half. The North was more affluent and developed as it was industrialised and connected to other countries by land and rail links, while the South, on the whole, remained agricultural. This resulted in differing political ideologies, with the bourgeoisie, upper class and businessmen fearing the rise of communism, while the working class began to look for solutions to their problems, seeing communism as a promising option. The Biennio Rosso, two years political instability from 1920 to 1921, highlighted the government's failure to unify to the country and solve Italy's post-war problems. As a result, the perception of the transformismo government was tarnished to a greater extent, all the while allowing extremist and fascist parties to gain support as they were perceived as more powerful and as good solutions. Therefore, to conclude, I do not agree that the appeal of fascism was the main reason for Mussolini becoming Prime Minister in 1922. Although the policies of fascism did come across as appealing to certain groups of people, such as the bourgeoisie, upper class, and businessmen especially, I do not believe that fascism would have been as popular with the Italian people if the transformismo government had not been so weak. The weaknesses simply motivated the Italian people to look for unfamiliar solutions. As a result, I believe that the weakness of the liberal government was the primary factor which resulted in Mussolini's appointment as Prime Minister. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of my podcast. Please click subscribe to be notified when the next episode is released.